So in this video, we're going to see about the Dirac potential problem. So a uh, particle is bound by the Dirac potential. So what is the Dirac potential? So Dirac potential, we first have to know what is a Dirac delta function. A function which has a peak only at the origin. So when this function value x is equal to zero, it has a peak. Okay, it has some height. Okay, a, a very finite, a very infinitesimal height. And at every other point, it is zero. Okay, so such a potential is called a Dirac potential. Okay, so uh, we can so at delta is equal to x. It has some value, okay. It has some value. Say let is it say it has some value v naught or v. And when del is equal to any other value, okay. When del is equal to any other value, okay. Where we can say it's uh, x is. Okay, so here I have tried x is equal to zero. When x is equal to zero, it is equal to some function b, uh, the height of the potential well. And when x is any other value, so when x is greater than zero or x is less than zero, it is the value of the function is zero. So such a potential is called a Dirac potential. So we take the height of so it's v of x we take to, to be this form where let me point it out here on screen. So this v of x we take the potential to be this form, which is a direct function, and it has a value when x is equal to zero, it is the value is one. Okay, the value of the uh, direct function is actually one. So then uh, this say uh, this this alpha will be the height of the function this alpha will be the height of the function so here actually it is it is one okay so when x is equal to zero the value becomes one x is not equal to zero the value becomes zero okay so this is function describes the height of the potential at zero okay so at the origin so we will write the Schrodinger equation. The Schrodinger equation reads this way. And then we will solve for the system where E is equal to 0, less than 0. Okay, that means we are talking about bound states. Uh, when E is greater than 0, we are calling it scattering states. So we are first will look at E is less than 0. Okay, so when E is less than 0, and in the region x, uh, x less than 0. Okay, in the region x less than 0, you know what happens, V of x becomes 0. Okay, so the Schrodinger equation reduces to this because we are substituting for this kappa this expression. So the Schrodinger equation simplifies this way. So the solution again is very simple for this kind of a problem. It has this kind of x, these the general solution is written here. Now we should know uh, when we have to no, normalize the, the solution, we have to find its value at infinities okay so we at negative infinity what happens here is the uh, the first term blows up so we have to choose a is equal to zero so that we get uh, we get normalizable solutions so a is equal to zero and this is the equation reduces to this so in x less than zero this is the this is our solution now we have to solve for x greater than 0. x is greater than 0. Again, v of x is 0. Now we'll take the general solutions. Instead of constants a and b, we take f and g. Okay. And again, here the second term blows up at infinity. So we pick the constant g to be equal to 0. And then the solution reduces to this form for x greater than 0. Now we set the boundary conditions. So uh, should be we had spoken about the boundary condition so the the solution should be obey this boundary condition such that psi the 
probability distribution function is always continuous okay it's always continuous so if it is continuous then it means that this b should be equal to f okay so that is what we are saying here if it is continuous then b is equal to f so the next boundary condition is that the derivative of psi is discontinuous at the point at or at the origin by some amount we have to find what amount uh, what that value is because it is continuous at all points where the potential is infinite so if, at every other point where the potential is zero this derivative of psi is continuous but at the point where it, the potential is infinite the derivative gets a discontinuity we have to find by what amount so that's what we'll do now next so the strategy to find out how much the derivative is discontinuous by is to integrate the schrodinger equation that we have here that we wrote down here and we integrate it with the from the limit minus epsilon to plus epsilon and we take that epsilon going to the limit zero so you can immediately see what this first term is this first term is just the derivative okay it is just the so it is nothing but the integral d psi by dx evaluated at the two endpoints so it reduces to this term here and this term vanishes because at the limit epsilon going to zero the area of the silver with vanishing width and finite height so uh, this area under the curve for uh, width that is going to zero will become zero okay so that's why this integral vanishes so eventually we have this equation only this term remaining this this set of terms this term is gone so this set of terms and this in integral has become the integral of the first derivative uh, or the uh, differentiation of the or just the it's just become the term d psi by dx okay this becomes the, the difference between the term d phi d psi by dx because it's evaluated at the two endpoints so now what we have is we so this b of x we substitute for v of x using what we said the v of x is the delta function times the height of the potential so we just substitute that and we find the so when you substitution for v of x we also uh, say that the it is, we are find, finding the discontinuity at the origin so we substitute x is equal to 0 and the psi of x becomes 0 and this is the discontinuity so the second the first derivative is discontinuous by this amount so now we have to use this equation to find the to so we have to use these boundary conditions to find the value for e so let's take the derivative of this solution we got here we take the derivatives d psi by dx okay is it taken the d psi by dx and for the two solutions and we find out their difference okay when we find out their difference the difference turns out to be this term okay but we had already found out that the difference in the derivatives this is the amount by which the derivative is discontinuous so we had found out to be this value so now what we do is we just compare these terms we compare and say that b is equal to psi of psi not psi of uh, zero okay because this is the initial condition right at psi is equal to zero we say it is the initial condition b so kappa will be equal to m alpha by h square so m kappa is equal to m alpha by h square and this two just cancels out so the allowed energies we can obtain from this relation because we assumed kappa to be here we had assumed kappa to be minus 2 me by h bar so we just substitute for that relation and we find out the energy value here and this is the so here we have the allowed energy values and then we normalize the solution that we obtain when we normalize the solution we set the probability density function to be equal to 1 because the maximum probability that you can have is 1 so we normalize the probability to 1 and the we find out the value of the constant by this condition b to be the square root of kappa 
So we just substitute. So we have this general solution and we found out the value of B. We just substitute that here and we also have the value of kappa. We have just substitute that here and this is the general solution and these are the allowed energy values.